So let's talk about validation rules. And I'm in a custom object that I've created in one of my Salesforce orgs here, and this is called Automobile. And this is to track the inventory of autos for a car dealership is the scenario that we're dealing with. Now for a validation rule, one limitation of numeric fields in Salesforce would be that they will display with commas separated every three digits depending on your locale. And so whenever we're trying to represent the year of a vehicle or an automobile, such as the year 2022, that would display as 2 comma 022. So one way that you can get around that is to convert, and this is what I've done here, convert this field to a text field rather than a numeric field. And text fields allow for alphanumeric entry, so you can enter in text and or numbers. And so I want to verify through a validation rule that whatever's put inside of this year field is numeric only. So I'm going to go into validation rules from the automobile custom object and click new to create a new validation rule. And this will verify that this particular field, the year field contains numeric values only. So I've given this a name and I'll add a description as well because it helps to describe what this rule does so that when you're looking at a list of validation rules on an object, you can tell at a glance what these different rules might do. So here down below for the validation rule, the error condition formula, what we're trying to accomplish is to set a formula set here so that when it evaluates to true, we can display an error message. And typically how I approach validation rules is I'll think through what I want to happen and what message I want to appear, and that helps to define what this rule needs to do. And you've got a couple of options as far as where that error may appear, either at the top of the page or at a specific field or field level. And so I'm going to select that this error message would display at the year field. And here's my error message so that whenever this formula evaluates to true, then they'll be prompted with this message saying the year field may only contain numeric values, okay? So sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually copy this and then paste this into the formula field. And this is kind of a development type of strategy. It's whenever you need to write something in code, it's a good idea to start with just regular English and then convert that into the code so that it's readable by Salesforce. And so this is just kind of a reference point. What we're wanting to happen here is we're wanting the year field to not equal a numeric value. And so what I can do, I'm gonna move this out of the way a little bit. And so the main point here is that as we dissect our sentence here, the year field is what we want to insert in the formula or evaluate against. And so I'm gonna click insert field and then select the automobile object here. There's other global variables available to you as well. But then I scroll down from automobile, moving over from the breadcrumbs here to the year field. This gives me the API name that I can then insert in my formula. Now, year underscore underscore C, that's a custom field as denoted by the double underscore C. And so now we're wanting to evaluate if this is a number, okay? Now, there's several different functions here available. There's is number, but I want to note as well that there's not an is text function, okay? But that's okay. We're wanting to see if the year field is a numeric field. If it's not, then we throw the error, okay? So that's the approach. So there's no is text. So we've will settle for is number and when you click on one of these functions it gives you a display of how it's used and then as well a definition and is number and then inside this text placeholder that would be our field name so we're going to use this selected function here but it'll return true if the text value is a number otherwise it returns false okay so usually what I'll do is I will copy and paste this example and the way that this is formatted Salesforce will use these parentheticals and text as a placeholder that you can then evaluate something against and so I'm going to insert this and then what I'll do is I'll replace text with my year field okay now let me go ahead and cut that and paste it in here so now now we are evaluating to see if the year field contains only numeric values basically. Now we want the formula to evaluate to true though to show this and display this error message. And so if the year field does indeed contain a number, there shouldn't be an error thrown. So what we need to do is kind of the inverse of this. The way that we can accomplish doing is text without there being an is text function is using another function which is the not function, in OT. And it contains the example here of not and then a logical, and it changes false to true or true to false. So basically what the not function does is it flips things from yes to no or, or no to yes, basically. So what we can do is we can copy this, and what I will do now is I will paste this before my logical, which the logical is the is number 
evaluating against the year field. So I'm going to insert this example, the not, and then the logical will be replaced by the actual logical. So I'm going to cut this and paste over the word logical inside the parentheticals without wiping out those parentheticals. And so now we have converted my rough description of what we're trying to accomplish into a formula. So we're evaluating the year field to see if it is not a numeric value. And that's the case where we want to show an error. I'm going to go ahead and remove my description here. The next step would be to check the syntax of the formula to make sure that there's no errors found. Scroll back and see that indeed there are no errors. And we've got our error message in place to display on the field of year stating the error message. And so now I just need to save this validation rule and then be sure that it's active. If it's not active, just check active. And then the final step when doing a validation rule is entering in a new record or updating an existing record to be sure that the rule is behaving the way that you expect it. What I'm going to do to test this is I'm going to go into my inventory management application that previously created. It contains the automobiles object. And so I'm going to select to create a new automobile and I'm going to enter in the year, and I'm going to test it out and try to introduce text. And so I'm going to enter in 202x, and then put in the required fields. I've got a field dependency here, and the other required fields, such as mileage, purchase date, purchase price. And then I'm going to attempt to save this, and if our validation rule is working correctly, it should display an error message right here for the year field. So clicking Save, and here we have a pop-up saying we've hit a snag, review the following fields, and then also the error message displaying at the field itself. So our validation rule is working, all is well. And one note is that whenever you create a validation rule, it does not retroactively go in and correct records that are in error or entered previously with text in the year field in this example. So for example, if one of these other automobiles that I previously had entered contained text in the year field, then it would uh, not fix that. And here's an example of that. Now, if I were to go in and try and edit, make any edits to an existing record that has a now error based on validation rule that has been recently introduced, then that validation rule will then draw attention to that fact. So let's say if I were to update the mileage on this and try and click save, the validation rule should fire once again. And I need to enter in a valid year and then it'll let it through. So a good way of testing is to test it on new records, testing to make sure that it fires correctly, that it doesn't fire incorrectly as well by entering in not only text in a year field on a test record, but also a valid numeric field to make sure that it passes it through and it's not throwing an error there as well. So if you found this Salesforce tutorial helpful, please do like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below for what you'd like to learn in Salesforce. And I just might make it my next video. Until then, I'll see you in the cloud.